last year. She amazed her family. But now... Mom, my science project is due tomorrow. Jeremy hates me. When chaos strikes... Mom, I want to play Xbox. No, it's my turn. <laughs> her true powers will be revealed. Hey, honey, your mom said she's going to stop by later. Is that okay? <laughs> Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. Exactly. I'm taking. Nelly, what did you do? How did she know? Gifted by God with the power to read minds. I don't have any homework. No. I mean, I did all my homework. No. Well, I did some of it. No. Fine, I haven't started yet. There's the truth. The wisdom to restore peace. He said, that's it. We're finished. So sick of this texting. What? Let me see that. Uh, wait. This says sick of this testing, not texting. Oh, right. He was taking the ACT. Thanks, Mom. The insight to see the future. I forgot to think of a science project. Yeah, I thought you might. Yes! With a burst of unlimited capacity. And her secret weapon, the look. These abilities combine to form the ultimate example of warmth, tenderness, and dignity. She is Mom. How do you like my new ride? Grandma! Mom? <laughs> Well, today, moms, it's your day. Uh, let me just uh, encourage everyone in the room for a second. Uh, dads, <clears throat> we're not going to talk about you today, so when you brag about moms, just sit there and take it. You're like, well, I do that too. I, your day's coming. But it's not today. It's mom's day, okay? Um, so whatever she wants, whatever, you know, you just, just you, you hook her up, right? I got two, that's right. So they were from moms. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> See, what I want to do this morning, now this is one of these talks that, well, it's going to be a little challenging for us. But you know, moms have to have those challenging conversations, don't they? Sometimes moms, now you understand, I may highlight moms, I may lean toward moms, I may favor moms a little bit more because I'm a mama's boy. My dad was not in the picture. My mom did both roles. And, and sometimes it meant beat the you-know-what out of me. Well, I would never, okay. One day you'll call me. <laughs> anyway, what I want to do today is take a page out of mom's playbook. Because here's the thing about a mama's love. You see, a mama's love can sometimes be annoying. How about embarrassing? Huh? Your, your mom ever embarrass you? How, now, this has been a long time ago, but how many, how many of you know when, when your mom fixed your hair with spit? <laughs> y yeah, right? Look, oh yeah. <laughs> or washed your, cleaned your face off with, with spit, yeah. But mom's spit was anointed, man. 
Yeah. You see, sometimes a mama's love can be over the top. It, it, it is absolutely wonderful um, and, and without a doubt unquestioning. Because in and of itself, a mama's love is it's her nature. She's on purpose about it. She's dialed in with it and she's unshakable about it. Yeah. And this means, and, and, and this is kind of where I'm going with this, is that a mom doesn't wait to feel like loving to love. Now, we do, don't we? We allow emotion to dictate love so often in our, in our journey. But for us today, <clears throat> we want to learn from moms because the thing that you have to understand is, you know, if we start practicing this, just think about it for a second. What if we love people like moms loved us? You know what's, Che, you know what's crazy? It's in the Bible, man. We're supposed to love like that. That's a New Testament commandment. Matter of fact, Jesus, you know, this the one we just sang about, name above all names, all power, Jesus, him. He said all the law and the prophets is all fulfilled in this one statement. Love God. Love people. The reason some of you all struggle loving people is because your love with God is still growing. I didn't say you didn't love God. I just said you're still growing in it. You know, Tracy and I, we've been, we will be married, what, babe, 30 years in November? See, we're still growing in our love for each other. Yeah, yeah y'all clapping now, but on, on year 22, you don't, no. <laughs> yeah. Make no mistake about it today. God is absolutely counting on us to kind of embrace this type of love today. To, to look at moms and see how they sacrifice and the commitment and things that they do. And he's expecting us to love people the way mamas loved us. After all, he has placed that love in us. As a matter of fact, Jesus, he made this statement. He said, guys, the world will know that you belong to me because of the love you have for one another. Yeah. Wow. I want, now, now, I know today we're going to be dialed in. You know, we're going to love one another today because the preacher's talking about love. But I'm talking about on a Tuesday afternoon when the one that is in here on the, they're not in this section, but they're over in that section. And, and y'all had a disagreement. You had a falling out and you were right in your mind. Let, let's see if y'all help, help a brother out. They, 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 they are, they're hard-headed over there. Not me, Rev. You must be talking about somebody on that side of the building. <laughs> Listen, we will all come in, uh, come encounter with, with people, with situations, circumstances that will push our buttons and we won't like or agree with things. People will hurt us and do us wrong and disappoint us. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit inside us, God wants us to, to show a little mama's love to people. When you don't feel like it, The reason I bring this up today, because I believe that we're living in a time in history where there is so much turmoil in society. And you know what to fix that? The love of God will fix that, man. When they're in your face screaming and talking about you on social media and. <clears throat> now, listen, this is tough. But when you shut up and you don't respond out of your emotion. Sometimes one of the most spiritual things you can do is zip it, right? See, the world, the world is watching us. We are the light of the world. And the reason that so often they're su such, uh, let me say it like this, the reason they're so critical of us, maybe so resistant about us, is because, first of all, obviously, the God of this world, Satan, according to the Apostle Paul, has blinded their minds so they don't see truth. But the other side of the coin is this. Just maybe, just maybe we've been, John, just a little hypocritical. I've, I've seen over the years with the church, we're so quick to point the finger at everybody else while three's pointing back at us. Man, guys, I'm telling you, the world is watching us. And we, um, we set, I, I heard, I forget where I saw this at years ago, but, uh, and you've heard me say it, but we should be the thermostat, not the thermometer. We should set the temperature in our communities, 
in our schools, in our government. The church should. I know some people don't like the things I say about government, and I've had many leave because I say things about government. Love you. But at some point, until the church stands up, the, the enemy and those that are deceived and confused will continue. Yeah. But in light of what I'm talking about today, those that are critical, those that are argumentative and they don't agree and they want to do all these things and say all these things, they are still God made. And by design, if you will take the, the road of love, you will impact their heart. You may not see it day one. You may not see it year one. But if you stay the course with this and you begin to practice the principles of the kingdom of heaven and you sow love in people, yeah. The writer of Proverbs says, a soft answer turns away wrath. I know sometimes you want to put them in their place. Put yourself in their place instead. Walk a mile in their shoes. Instead of being so critical all the time, just extend mercy, huh? extend love to people. Yeah, but they don't deserve it. Said who? You? Jesus died that they do deserve it. Ow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So because of this, knowing that they're watching us, knowing that they need what we have, instead of being religious and pharisaical and arrogant about who we are in our denominational philosophies that we've accumulated over the years of I don't know what from, let's extend the hand of mercy to somebody. You see, just like God uses moms, you know, to, to love us, to influence us, that's what he wants the church to do to people that we run, we run across. He wants us to be an expression of him. But make no mistake about it, guys. This, this kind of love, this God love, it's going to require this supernatural force called faith in your life. As a matter of fact, there, there's a perfect story of this in the Gospel of Luke, because Jesus, well, he's teaching this lesson to his disciples, and they, if, if you go through the New Testament, this is the only time that his disciples, Jack, it's the only time they ask for more faith. Lord, increase our faith. Go check it out. And what was he talking about? Let me show you. Luke chapter 17. Watch this, verse 3. Jesus is speaking here. Take heed to yourself. That's old, an that's old English term. In other words, pay attention to your own life. Can I say it? Can I paraphrase? Mind your own business. <laughs> huh? If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Now, listen. Let me take a second. This word rebuke, this word rebuke means go get him by himself. It doesn't mean put your junk on social media. It doesn't mean gossip about him in the church. There's another lesson about that that I don't have time to go into today about that. But he's saying right here, if your brother sins, rebuke him or call him on his junk one-on-one. -on -one. I cannot tell you the number of times that y'all, my church folk, go to Tracy to make sure I get a message. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I, well, if I, tell the, if I tell the wife, she'll... I, She'll tell the preacher for me. No, that's not what Jesus is saying here. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, am I reading the Bible here? Matter of fact, if you got old school, it's red letters. Jesus is talking. And he said, if he repents, do what? Forgive him. Now, I know some people think, well, I've heard people say over the years, well, if you forgive them, you forget it. Well, that's dumb. You can't forget it. Especially if they did something bad to you, how are you going to forget it? How many of you had, like this past week, Tracy and I, I worked on my diet really well. <laughs> but, but we went to this one restaurant. We'd been, it, we, we have this list of restaurants we go to every year when we go down there. And this has been on our list for several years, and we just keep putting it off because it's, uppity. You know what I mean by uppity? You, know, you don't go in there with your t-shirt and your flip-flops on. I was pretty close. But 
But another word for uppity is expensive. <laughs> but nonetheless, we tried it. It's the best meal I had all week. I paid $45 for four scallops. <laughs> four, Andy. <laughs> Server brought it to my plate. I'm like, Now, praise the Lord, it did, have, it did come with lobster, macaroni, and cheese. Yeah, right? But here's the thing. Now that you've tried that, you're not going to forget it, man. I know people say when you forgive, you forget. No, you don't. You don't forget it. You choose to leave it behind. That's what you do when you forgive. You on purpose move forward with it. He says, if he repents, forgive him. But he didn't stop there. Jesus said, because he's probably knowing Peter's thinking here. He said, hey, if he sins to get you seven times in a day, in one day, and, and, and seven times in a day, he returns to you and repents. Now, let me stop for a second. This word repent, this is for somebody today. It doesn't mean come say I'm sorry and then go back to your same junk. That's not repentance. Mm -mm. That, that has nothing to do with repentance. Saying I'm sorry, that doesn't... Anybody can say, I'm sorry. Show me sorry. Repent means to change. But Jesus said if he comes back to you seven times, in other words, if he's got to repent seven times, what did he do seven times? He blew it seven times. He made you mad, hurt your feelings, didn't do something he said or she was going to do. Come, come on. Seven times in a day. And you shall... Forgive him. And then the apostle said, Phew, Lord, I definitely need some faith for this. See, if, you, if you're really going to be a person of faith, this is what it's going to be about. Learning how to walk in love with people. Learning how to extend mercy to people when they don't deserve it. And the, the interesting thing is when you begin to grow in your faith, what, what will happen is you will find yourself, because the, the only way you grow in faith is by growing in your relationship with Jesus. The only way that you grow in faith is by growing in your relationship with Jesus. And when you grow in your relationship with Jesus, you're going to be more like Jesus, which means you're going to be more merciful, more graceful to other people. You're going to be more patient with people. You're going to practice this principle. Your faith is going to be developed. And, and what Jesus does right after the, the, the disciples ask this question, if you go read this story, he goes right into one of his great faith lessons. It's interesting how Jesus would always just, he, he would always teach, man. He said, I know what you're saying, boys, so let me show you. Because they're thinking, you need more faith, you need more faith. And he said, well, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this tree, be plucked up and thrown into the sea, and the tree would obey you. If you had faith, you would say. If you had faith, you would say. And then he goes into the, I know a lot of, a lot of people think he switches gears when he goes into talking about servants, but he's not. He's talking about looking at using your faith like you would a servant. He said, if you've got a servant and he's out in the field plowing and he comes back in, you don't tell him to go get cleaned up and come get ready for dinner. I'll take care of you. You tell him, go get dinner ready. He's your servant. He said, this is how faith is supposed to be. Faith is your God-given, God-ordained, God-empowered servant. That's how you use faith. But you have to believe this stuff. Truth is, without faith, we don't even receive God. We can't please God. And make no mistake about it, guys. When it comes to this, this principle here about forgiving, extending mercy, loving like Jesus did, it's going to take some faith on your part. Because there will be times when you're not ready to forgive. You're ready to do just the opposite, right? How many of you ready to do some throwdown? <laughs> not this church? No. Different group? Yeah. You see, mom, this is what I want, want to take away from moms today. They, they don't wait. Because I know sometimes moms, you know, it's all they can do to hold back. Moms, help, help a brother with this for a minute. You ever, I mean, you're talking, to, and you're talking to your teenager. And you know she's going to do the wrong, you know what, you know she's going to do dumb. And there's no, <laughs> And there's nothing you could say. I mean, there's a but you want to say a boatload, but you just.
Because you've learned, it's, it's crazy how teenagers think they're smarter than mama. I mean, it blows my mind. Now, now don't laugh because you used to, we were one of them. And we did that same dumb stuff. But teenagers, all of you in the room, you're not smarter than mama. You're not, I know you think you are, but you're not. Uh uh. So sometimes moms, in their love and patience and their grace, they just, bless your heart. You know, because they know you're going to do what you're going to do, right? And then when you go do the do, and you do, like, oh, and then you go running back to mama because you realize, oh, that was dumb. Yeah, right? See, this is the thing I love about moms. They don't, they're always on. They're not waiting to see what you do to decide if they're going to love you on that day or not. They're going to love you on all of them. This is what God is looking for with us. And one of the primary reasons that God gave us his spirit was to lead us, to empower us to be more like him. Well, here's the thing. According to the apostle John, God is love. It's not something he decides to, to act on. It's his nature. It's his personality. God is love. And that's where when you, when you begin to understand that that's th this kind of life that he's talking about us living, it does require faith. See, so often when I talk to people about faith, it's about believing God for the new thing, the promotion, the new house, the healing, etc. But there are times in life when God's wanting you to believe him to be more like him to somebody that their life is upside down right now. And the last three Christians they met were 21st century Pharisees. You ever met one of them? Sitting beside them? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Yeah. See, just like moms would never expect their children. Now, I want you, this is one of your take-homes today. Just like moms would never expect their children to do anything that they couldn't do, God's the same way with us. You're not going to tell your child that they can, you know, you know if, they, if they can't do it, you're going to help them understand or you're going to teach them how to do it, right? You're just not just going to throw them out there. This is how God is with us, you know, and he will never ask us to do something that we can't do. But make no mistake, he's asking. <laughs> Today, he's asking that we choose to walk in love with people. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. If you are born again today, you see, remember Jesus said, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we would say to the tree, be pulled up and thrown into the sea. Well, today, some of you all, you have that faith inside you. So say to that hurt, say to that rejection, say to that disappointment, you have no place in my life anymore to the wrong that someone has done you. Don't let it torment your mind. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. So instead of talking about, instead of magnifying the problem all the time, magnify the God in your life. Begin to talk about him instead. Speak the thing of God over your life. Father, thank you that your joy lives in me, regardless of what someone has done or said about me. I trust you. That's what Proverbs tells us, right? Trust in the Lord with all of our heart and don't lean on our understanding, but in all of our ways. Huh? See, if, if you start practicing to do things God's way, you know, as I thought about this, Chad, here's the deal. It's not like God's not asking us to do something he hadn't already done for us. He's the first one that showed us the way for this stuff. And so when you start following the New Testament and you listen to some of the disciples and the things that they say, I mean, uh, for, for example, in, in 1 Peter, this guy, now Peter, he, he learned this firsthand, but he makes this radical statement in 1 Peter chapter 4. He says this, above all, and as I was meditating the scripture, I began to think, is he for real? Above all? that's one of those all-inclusive, like nothing's left out of above what? How much? One of my teachers back in Bible college, he used to say this. He said, man, I did the Greek, the Aramaic, the Chaldean. He said, I studied all of them. And what I found out about this definition of all, it meant all. <laughs> all. Above all. So above everything in your life. Have this fervent, I love the, how the Amplified words it, have this fervent, intensely 
passionate, unfailing love for one another. Man, I know some of you are thinking, well, I, yeah, but there's some people in, in the church, I don't even know them. Then after church, go meet somebody new. Okay? Yeah, but I'm awkward. I, so am I. You know, I'll have people that'll stop me in the lobby and I'll talk to them for a minute and then all of a sudden, and then you got that awkward, just nothing. You just stand there looking at each other like, <laughs> you say something. No, you say something. I don't know what to say. <laughs> right? Why y'all laughing? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's how we are. Yeah. Above all, have this fervent, intensely passionate, unfailing love for one another because love, watch this, love covers a multitude of sin. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. I got one amen. <laughs> Listen, because we, Roger, we don't cover it. We blab it. We want to make sure that at least five people know what you did to me or said about me. And today with socialism media, I mean, that's all we do is air our garbage. I mean, just... Just think if we did, just think, Amanda, think if we did social media old school today. Just think if I went around showing you all the pictures, if I had printed out pictures of showing you all the pictures of stuff I did this week. And I just, I said, come over, I want to show you. And you, you stop somebody at the mall, look at these. You don't even know them, you're just showing them all these pictures. Everything you did, what you had to eat. You, you circled this and you really liked it, huh? They'd be looking at you like, what? This person is weird, man. And then you're making it. Oh, see, that's ridiculous, right? But we do that junk, man. And we think it's cool because society said, oh, this is what it's for. It's not. Some people don't want to see you junk, man. Well, Reverend, that's really not encouraging. <laughs> Have you seen what you post over the last month? Have you went back and looked at it? Some of you, you should probably read it before you hit send. <laughs> Some laughing, some like, that's not funny, Reverend. I just did that. <laughs> it's okay. God still loves you. We still love you. And you're thinking, yeah, but I don't know if I'm loving you right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You got, this, you know, this is what my wife says. Anytime you get into these situations, it, God provides opportunity for you to practice what you just learned. Yeah. Yes, today we're going to get some opportunity to love people, right? Some of y'all at the restaurant today when you take mama out. And the server sucks. <laughs> you ever had one of them? <laughs> yeah. And so you decide to punish her by not giving her a tip? Listen, I used to, I used to, but can I, can I meddle for just a minute? I'm going to help somebody today. Because, see, I used to work for a restaurant company, and my job was, before I, before I got saved, I traveled all over the eastern part of the United States opening restaurants. And I trained all the people. And so I would do this demonstration with servers, and I would take 10, 10 ones, and I'd put them on the table. And I would teach them. I said, this is how your tip goes. And you, you, you know, because if you're paying for something, they shouldn't have to ask. If you ain't good, they shouldn't have to wait. And if they do have to wait, you should explain. But most don't. Most get mad because, well, they're just mean to me. And then a dollar goes away. And then another dollar goes away. And then they have to wait for refills and another dollar goes away. And then they have to, after they've eaten and all the stuff, and you bring the expensive bill, and then you make them wait to pay. And then three more dollars goes away. And now all of a sudden your $10 tip is three and you mad at them. I can tell a lot of y'all never waited on tables. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> because I think everybody in here should wait on tables. It will change your life. It'll give you a new respect for people. Because people are ruthless, man. So for y'all, y'all today that's going out to eat and the server's not in good, then give her an offering on mama's behalf. Okay, just bless her. <laughs> Above all, have this fervent, intensely passionate, unfailing love because love covers a multitude of sin. Watch this. Love overlooks unkindness. <laughs> but he's not done. And unselfishly seeks the best of others. John Maxwell calls this the 10 principle. 
On a scale of 1 to 10, you know, if you go to the doctor and you got something that's hurting, he says on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, what's your pain level? Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, John Maxwell teaches people, that's how you start with someone. When you see someone, anyone that you meet, anyone that you talk to, you start at 10 with them. That's how you treat them. Come on, y'all. You got to get this today. This is why the Apostle Peter... This is why the Apostle Paul, he, he tops it off with a little more icing on the cake in Colossians chapter 3. He says the same thing. Above all, how much is all? Paul says, clothe yourself with love. You got to put it on. It's not just going to overtake you. You got to clothe yourself with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. The message says, regardless of what else you do, put on love. Put on love. See, this is the thing that's important for us today. This is something that moms teach us. Even though in the natural, you know, for a mom's love, sometimes it's just, it just, it seems like it just flows out of her. But I can promise you there are times when it's all that she can do to. How many moms we got in the room when it goes south and you're ready to do something, it, it's the first thing you grab you, when you're ready to crack some, hey, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you can get first. Look, nobody wanted to raise their hand like, you don't understand the society we live in today. I could get in trouble. <laughs> Somebody will tell on me. <laughs> no. I mean, whatever my mom could grab first, man, it was on. <laughs> How many of you, now listen, I'm, I, I'm, I'm old school. So some of y'all can't relate to this. My mom, there's, I can remember occasions, she would make me go pick the switch. Yeah. Oh, y'all know? Yeah. Pick the switch. And, and you're like, which one going to be worse, man? The stiff, rigid one or the one that wraps around and gives that welt? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Moms, moms would teach some valuable lessons, wouldn't they? Go get the switch. Like, oh, I mean, this is, you're taking your time, like... <laughs> She's like, that's five more. You better come on. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. Uh, I guess the Lord knew that moms were going to be these, these brutes. Pro Proverbs, Proverbs says this in Proverbs chapter 1. Do not neglect your mother's instructions. That's, God's, that's God talking. He said, boy, you better listen to your mama. Huh? Because sometimes, when it, moms, you can relate to this. You, you know how you have to teach and reteach and reteach the same thing over and over. Because cause kids are hard headed, aren't they? Bless their little innocent hearts. And you do it relentlessly because that's the, that's the nature in you. You love them. And see, God's the same way with us. I know some people think God's frustrated with us. No, God's never mad at you, God loves you. And he repeatedly teaches you, teaches you, teaches you, teaches you. Now, I know sometimes parents, you say, no, don't make me tell you again. Yeah. Well, here's a, perfect, here's a perfect picture of that in the New Testament when Jesus and a group of the disciples was up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the rest of the disciples were down in the city. And this dad brought his, peril, or his uh, epileptic son to the disciples, and the disciples couldn't do anything about it. And so Jesus comes back down off the mountain, and the dad tells on them. He says, Lord, I brought them to your crew, and they couldn't do nothing. That's me paraphrasing. That's, you know, that's the G version. And, and listen, listen to what Jesus said. You faithless, perverse, or you faithless, twisted thinking people. How long do I have to put up with you? I, I, could hear, I could hear my mom saying, how long I got to do? Come here. <laughs> huh? How long do I have to put? I have told you. Now, here's what, here's what 21st century moms do. You ground it for six weeks, and then tomorrow you let them off of it. Yeah. I'm like, what's the matter with you? Y'all know it grounded. In my day, grounded meant grounded. You get off the school bus, you go to your room. TV. There wasn't no TV. I mean, there was one, they had, not in my room anyway. There was one in the whole house. This is, this is 1975. I don't know where y'all at. 
<laughs> TV. <laughs> I, I mean, I was the remote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there are times in your life when moms love, man, it's just that patient, steady, reteach, reteach. This is exactly how God is with us. You see, really, at the end of the day, the, the truth is, just about anything in life, if you look at it, it, anything good, it rarely happens on accident. It doesn't. And living this kind of life, living a life of love, make no mistake, it's going to be on purpose that you, that you practice this stuff. This was, this was the Apostle Peter. This was the Apostle Paul's point when he said, above all. See, I want some of you leaving here today with this revelation. On this Mother's Day, you look at your moms, and I know sometimes, man, I'm, I'm, I can remember, of course, I was a dumb kid, man, just ignorant, selfish, didn't care about anybody but myself. I can, I can only imagine sometimes my mom's patience, how thin it was. She was like, I, I, mean, now I, I, can, I can just visualize her, just give, give me a minute. I'm going to go pray for a minute because I'm going to kill you. <laughs> You dead, boy, you dead. <laughs> huh? Because she was, she was patient with us, man. I mean, you, you know, single mom, I can't even imagine what that would be like to, in today's world. Yeah. So, you know, you all know my mom's my hero, her and Jesus. Yeah. And uh, I was telling uh, Pat Kerr, she lives in Ohio now, but uh, uh, Pat's uh, daughter lives in heaven now. And I, I, I sent her a text this morning just wishing her happy mother. And I said, I said Pat, you and my uh, Brenda and mom just... Uh, probably laughing at us today, having breakfast, cooking together. Heaven's a real place, y'all. You know, my mom's still alive. She's still kicking. So I'm okay. Uh, Dwayne asked me before service, he said, what's, what's the odds today you're going to make it through sermon? I said, Dwayne, I think I'm going to make it today. Y'all know how I used to be. I was a baby up here. I couldn't even talk to you for five minutes. Mama, I'd be crying. Well, I'm good now. You know, Pat has helped me a lot with that. But uh, the thing about mothers is that you've got to realize so the men, they are these Warriors. Yeah, they are. That's right. Go on, clap. Clap like you mean it. And the thing that you have to take away from a mama's love is it's just like God's love. It is never established. It is never founded on emotion. It's who she is, man. That's who she is. And isn't that crazy that God is asking us to be that way? To love like mama's love? Take your shoe off and slap somebody up the head and say, that's a little mama's love. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Huh? Here's the thing. Because think about it. I mean, boy, if I could get to you right now. Yeah. Now, sometimes, and you know, sometimes that you, that you'd have to wait. Now, we never got the just wait till your dad gets home stuff. You know, some moms say, you just wait till your father gets home. There wasn't none of that at my house. You know, it was, it was just her. she said, say, well, you wait till I get home from work. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, I'm running away. <laughs> I'm not going to be here tonight. Yeah. See, none of the emotions, that, that, that stuff that moms would go through, it wouldn't phase that love. Now, now don't, don't make this, you know, anything that confuses you with the fact that love doesn't discipline because God says whoever he loves, he disciplines. Don't think you're just going to continually get away with your dumbness. You're not. God will deal with you. Well, no, I've been, I've been doing this for a long time. I know. Um, a lot of times I was watching that, that video and I was reminded of Peyton. Sneaking, because I hear stories about Peyton likes to sneak food. And then mom will bust him. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> right? <laughs> so there is discipline. I'm not, don't just eliminate that part of it. I'm not dis discrediting that part of it. Yes, moms, we know you discipline, sometimes heavy handedly. <laughs> but what God is looking for in all of us today is He wants us as a body extending that mercy to people. He'll do the correcting. You and me, I, re I really feel like today what, what, what our society de needs today is a little bit more mama's love. I really feel like that. You just, yeah, they did me wrong. Okay, okay, let it go, man. Well, I can't let it go. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 
You could, you just choose not to. You could move forward. You could choose. Well, what did Jesus tell the, the disciples how many times a day? Seven times a day. Forgive them. So if Jesus said you could do it, what's that mean? You can do it. Well, for example, let's look at Jesus' life. I mean, you think about it. He's not asking us to do something he hasn't done. So look at his life for a second. He, he didn't wait for us to measure up. He didn't. He didn't wait for us to meet a certain denominational standard. You ready for this? He didn't wait for us to straighten our lives out. He started with love. He started with love, man. He said, this, this is who I am. Let me fix you with this. And I know sometimes it makes no sense to do that. God's ways are different. I get it. And this is where the faith comes in. Because so often doing things God's way totally contradicts human nature. Because you want to get them, don't you? We've been raised in society. TV, TV land teaches us. You better get them. You got to pay them back. Who did that to you? I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. We was watching Wyatt Earp while he was on vacation. <laughs> you tell him hell's coming. I'm like, what's that mean, man? <laughs> Does he, do people even know what they're saying when they say dumb stuff like that? <laughs> it's already came and it got, it got defeated. It's done, all right? See, God has given us this measure of faith in our lives so that we can live this different way that we can be open to the reality that his way is different. So this Mother's Day, let's, uh, let's do something supernatural today, okay? Let's, let's on purpose commit to helping each other be humble followers of the one who went first. What about that? Let's trust in him to give us enough faith to be an expression of that kind of love. I, can I, can I take it a little personal for a second? How about right now, though there is somebody, you, you thinking about somebody right now that you know they do not deserve your mercy. Everybody in this room, we got somebody. Done us wrong, did something. And the thing is, Every time you reason that situation, that circumstance away, every time you think about it and try to think, well, it doesn't make sense. Faith says, I'm going to trust that God's way is right. Amen. You know, Shakespeare made this profound statement. He said, reason and love keep little company. There, you will always find an excuse. You can always reason away not loving because of what they did to you. God says today by faith. Let's start with that today. Right? I mean, think about it. You ask the mom of any teenager. As mad as mom gets, that love will rise to the top. Past all the pain, all the mean things that the teen... You know, teenagers say mean stuff to a mom. You know it? If, you, if you're in this room today, teenagers, and you've done that, in the words of Jesus, repent! <laughs> yeah. Because moms, they just look past all that stuff. See, I believe for any of us today that we're willing to walk closer with Jesus, we're willing to acknowledge that his nature is in us, that his way is higher than our ways, that we're willing to embrace the giftings that he's put in us, it will be evident towards the people around you. They'll recognize that in your life. They'll see that light, that love in and on you. I'll leave you with this today. In the words of the Apostle Paul, he says this in Ephesians 4. Now that you're learning the truth about Jesus, it's time to let go of your old nature. Who's got to let it go? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just can't, you know, I just can't, I can't let it go. You can, by the power of the Holy Spirit inside you, he says it's time to let go of your old nature. Instead, let his spirit renew your thoughts, watch this, and your attitudes. 
Let his spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Let his spirit renew your thoughts and your... See, some of y'all just need a little attitude adjustment today. That's all. Yeah. He said, put on your new nature created to be like God. Your new nature is created to be like God. So put that nature on today. As part of the body of Christ, Jesus is counting on us. He's empowered us. He's anointed us. In the words of the Apostle Paul, above all, above all, clothe yourself with love. So today, moms, thank you for setting the standard. Thanks for being that example on the good days and the bad. And I know some of you think, well, yeah, but my mom didn't always do it right. <laughs> well, nobody always did it right. Come on. But today is mom's day, right? And a mom's love, it's unshakable, man. And that's what God is wanting us to take away from this today is that we be a small expression of him to this world that's confused about the church. They're confused about Jesus. And sometimes all they need is a little extension of God's love. Huh? Yeah, but they did wrong. Chances are they know they did wrong. You know, they probably know that. And they're just trying to cover all that up because they know it was wrong. If you'll extend love to somebody today. Right? Let me pray with you. Father, this morning, for everyone here that struggles with hurts and pains, things that have been done against them. My prayer for every person here this morning is this, that they get the revelation of not just a mom's love, but your love, Lord, that we're able to stand in this place, that you have strengthened us by faith that we can extend your love to others. And so Holy Spirit, today we rely on your help to do that in your precious name, Jesus, amen. Now here's the deal, before I uh, let you go this morning, you know I never wanna close out a service without giving someone an opportunity. Maybe you're here today and mama drug you to church. You didn't want to go, but it was Mother's Day. You're like, all right, I'm going because I love you, mom. And you don't believe in Jesus, but today something's going on in your thought life. And that thing rolling around in the back of your head, that's the spirit of God pulling on your heart. He's not asking you to become a member of Victory Life Church. You may not even like me, but you're here today and that thought is him saying, give me a chance in your life. And so if you're listening, if you're watching today, give Jesus a chance. Take a simple step of faith and see what he'll do in your life. And that's all it is, is one simple act of faith. So we're going to help you with this very simple prayer today. As we pray this, you pray it with us. Those of you watching, you pray the prayer with us. Give Jesus a chance in your life. Let's all say it together as a family. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said the prayer, if you're in the room, let somebody know outside. We've got a special little gift for you. For those listening or watching, tell somebody. Call us. Let us know, man. The greatest thing in your life just took place. Amen. Now, for the rest of you, I know many of you, you still practice bringing your tithe into the church house. I know a bunch of you like to go online and give there. Either way, God is honored by your giving. We are grateful for your giving. So whichever way you do, the blessing of the Lord be on all that you sow your hand to, all that you return to him, the blessings of heaven are open for you. In the name of Jesus, you be blessed today. Hey, today is Mother's Day, so take care of them, bless them, give them what they want. Yeah. God bless you all. We love you, moms. Happy Mother's Day.